Kim Dae Young or Kim Dae Young, Korean pronunciation Kim D. Do, the 6th of January 1924 to the 18th of August 2009, was a South Korean politician who served as president of South Korea from 1998 to 2003. He was a 2000 Nobel Peace Prize recipient, the only Korean Nobel Prize recipient in history. He was sometimes referred to as the Nelson Mandela of South Korea. Early life and education Kim was born on 6 January 1924, but he later registered his birth date to 3 December 1925 to avoid conscription during the time when Korea was under Japanese colonial rule. Kim was the second of seven children to middle class farmers. Kim was born in Sinan in what was then the Jeolla province, the city is now in Jeolanam Do. Kim's family had moved to the nearby port city of Makpa so that he could finish high school. He adopted the Japanese name Toyota Taichu during the Japanese colonial period. Kim graduated from Makpa Commercial Middle School in 1943 at the top of the class. After working as a clerk for a Japanese-owned shipping company, he became its owner and became very rich. Kim escaped communist capture during the Korean War. Entry to politics Kim first entered politics in 1954 during the administration of Korea's first president, Syngman Rhee. Although he was elected as a representative for the National Assembly in 1961, a military coup led by Park Chung-hee, who later assumed dictatorial powers, voided the elections. He was able to win a seat in the House in the subsequent elections in 1963 and 1967 and went on to become an eminent opposition leader. As such, he was the natural opposition candidate for the country's presidential election in 1971. He nearly defeated Park, despite several handicaps on his candidacy which were imposed by the ruling regime. A very talented orator, Kim could command unwavering loyalty among his supporters. His staunchest support came from the Jeolla region, where he reliably garnered upwards of 95% of the popular vote, a record that has remained unsurpassed in South Korean politics. Kim was almost killed in August 1973, when he was kidnapped from a hotel in Tokyo by KCIA agents in response to his criticism of President Park's Yushin program, which granted near-dictatorial powers. Years later, Kim reflected on these events during his 2000 Nobel Peace Prize lecture. I have lived, and continue to live, in the belief that God is always with me. I know this from experience. In August of 1973, while exiled in Japan, I was kidnapped from my hotel room in Tokyo by intelligence agents of the then military government of South Korea. The news of the incident startled the world. The agents took me to their boat at anchor along the seashore. They tied me up, blinded me, and stuffed my mouth. Just when they were about to throw me overboard, Jesus Christ appeared before me with such clarity. I clung to him and begged him to save me. At that very moment, an airplane was sent down from heavens by the Almighty God himself to rescue me from the moment of death. Philip Habib, the U.S. ambassador in Seoul, had interceded for him with the South Korean government. Although Kim returned to South Korea, he was banned from politics and imprisoned in 1976 for having participated in the proclamation of an anti government manifesto and sentenced for five years in prison, which was reduced to house arrest in 1978. During this period, he was designated a prisoner of conscience by Amnesty International. Kim had his political rights restored in 1979 after Park was assassinated. Death sentence and exile However, in 1980, Kim was arrested and sentenced to death on charges of sedition and conspiracy in the wake of another coup by Chun Du Wan and a popular uprising in Gwangju, his political stronghold. Pope John Paul II sent a letter to then South Korean President Chun Du Wan on of December 1980, asking for clemency for Kim, a Catholic, and with the intervention of the United States government, the sentence was commuted to 20 years in prison. He was given exile in the U.S. and temporarily settled in Boston and taught at Harvard University as a visiting professor to the Center for International Affairs. During his period abroad, he authored a number of opinion pieces in leading Western newspapers that were sharply critical of the South Korean government. 
On March 30, 1983, Kim presented a speech on human rights and democracy at Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia and accepted an honorary Doctor of Laws degree by the institution. Two years later, in 1985, he returned to his homeland. <laughs> Road to the presidency from 1987 to 1997 Kim was again put under house arrest upon his return to Seoul, but resumed his role as one of the principal leaders of the opposition. When Chun Doo Wan succumbed to the popular demands in 1987 and allowed the country's first honest presidential election, Kim Dae Young and the other leading opposition figure, Kim Young Sam, initially promised to unite behind one candidate. However, due to a dispute between the two men, Kim Dae Young split off from the main opposition party, the Reunification Democratic Party, and formed the Peace Democratic Party to run for the presidency. As a result, the opposition vote was split in two, and ex General Ro Tae Woo, Chun Doo Wan's hand picked successor, won with only 36.5% of the popular vote. Kim Young Sam receiving 28%, and Kim Dae Young 27% of the vote. In 1992, Kim made yet another failed bid for the presidency, this time solely against Kim Young Sam, who had merged the RDP with the ruling Democratic Justice Party to form the Democratic Liberal Party, which eventually became the Grand National Party. Many thought Kim Dae Young's political career was effectively over when he took a hiatus from politics and departed for the United Kingdom to take a position at Clare Hall, Cambridge University as a visiting scholar. However, in 1995 he announced his return to politics and began his fourth quest for the presidency. The situation became favorable for him when the public revolted against the incumbent government in the wake of the nation's economic collapse in the Asian financial crisis just weeks before the presidential election. Allied with Kim Jong-pil, he defeated Lee Hoi Chong, Kim Young-sam's designated successor, in the election held on 18 December 1997. When he was sworn in as the 8th President of South Korea on 25 February 1998, it marked the first time in Korean history that the ruling party peacefully transferred power to a democratically elected opposition victor. The election was marred with controversy, as two candidates from the ruling party split the conservative vote 38.7% and 19.2% respectively, enabling Kim to win with only 40.3% of the popular vote. Kim's chief opponent, Lee Hoi Chong, was a former Supreme Court justice and had graduated at the top of his class from Seoul National University School of Law. Lee was widely viewed as elitist and his candidacy was further damaged by charges that his sons dodged mandatory military service. Kim's education in contrast was limited to vocational high school, and many Koreans sympathized with the many trials and tribulations that Kim had endured previously. The preceding presidents Park Chung-hee, Chun Doo-wan, Ro Tae Wu, and Kim Young-sam originated from the Jongsang region, which became wealthier since 1945 partly due to the policies of the Park, Chun and Ro's regimes. Kim Dae-young was the first president to serve out his full term who came from the Jeolla region in the southwest, an area that had been neglected and less developed, at least partly because of discriminatory policies of previous presidents. Kim's administration included more individuals from the Chala province, leading to charges of reverse discrimination. However, the actual numbers of the ministers and administrators of Kim Dae-young's government from Jeolla region indicate that they were not over-represented. <laughs> Presidency Economic achievements Kim Dae-young took office in the midst of the economic crisis that hit South Korea in the final year of Kim Young-sam's term. He vigorously pushed economic reform and restructuring recommended by the International Monetary Fund, in the process significantly altering the landscape of South Korean economy. After the economy shrank by 5.8% in 1998, it grew 10.2% in 1999. In effect, his policies were to make for a fairer market by holding the powerful chable conglomerates accountable, e.g., greater transparency in accounting practices. State subsidies to large corporations were dramatically cut or dropped. North Korea policy His policy of engagement with North Korea has been termed the Sunshine Policy. 
He moved to begin détente with the communist government in North Korea, which culminated in a historic summit meeting in 2000 in Pyongyang with North Korean leader Kim Jong-il. This marked a critical juncture in inter-Korean relations, and the two Koreas have had direct contact with each other since. On 13 October 2000, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for these efforts. However, the historic event was tainted significantly by allegations that at least several hundred million dollars had been paid to Pyongyang. His chief of staff, Park Ji Won, was sentenced to 12 years in prison in 2003 for, among other charges, his role in the Hyundai payment to North Korea for the North South Summit. Also, in order to persuade North Korea to attend the summit, several unconverted long term prisoners kept by South Korea were released and returned to North Korea. Relationship with former presidents After Kim achieved the presidency and moved into the Blue House, there was uncertainty and considerable speculation about how he would handle the office. He had been sentenced to death by Chun Doo Wan. Chun and his successor Ro Tae Wu had been sentenced by Kim Dae Young's predecessor President Kim Young Sam. Kim Dae-young pardoned Chun. During his presidency, he introduced South Korea's contemporary welfare state, successfully shepherded the country's economic recovery, brought in a new era of economic transparency, and fostered a greater role for South Korea in the world stage, including the FIFA World Cup, jointly hosted by South Korea and Japan in 2002. Kim completed his five-year presidential term in 2003 and was succeeded by Ro Mu Yun. A presidential library at Yonsei University was built to preserve Kim's legacy, and there is a convention center named after him in the city of Gwangju, the Kim Dae Young Convention Center. Topic: <laughs> Controversies. In 1999, the Fergate scandal damaged Kim Dae Young and his party's reputation. Topic: <laughs> Post-presidency. Kim called for restraint against the North Koreans for detonating a nuclear weapon and defended the continued sunshine policy towards Pyongyang to defuse the crisis. He also received an honorary doctorate at the University of Portland on 17 April 2008 where he delivered his speech, "'Challenge, Response, and God". The WikiLeaks data reveals that the U.S. Embassy in Seoul described Kim as, "'South Korea's first left-wing president' to the American government on his day of death. Death Kim died on 18 August 2009 at 13.43 KST, at Severance Hospital of Yonsei University in Seoul. The cause of death was given as multiple organ dysfunction syndrome. An interfaith state funeral was held for him on 23 August 2009 in front of the National Assembly Building, with a procession leading to the Seoul National Cemetery where he was interred according to Catholic traditions. He is the second person in South Korean history to be given a state funeral after Park Chung-hee. North Korea sent a delegation to his funeral. He died about three months after the ninth South Korean president Ro Mu Yun committed suicide on May 23, 2009. See also Liberalism in South Korea North-South Presidential Summit Corruption Allegations KT List of Korean Nobel Laureates Notes References External links Official Nobel page for Kim Kim Dae Young Presidential Library Bill McKern August 18, 2009 Kim Dae Young South Korean President Find a Grave Retrieved August 19, 2011 Appearances on C-SPAN